Hello guys! Editing, revision, rewriting, all of that, that's what we're talking today about. And if you want to keep learning all of the comicing stuff and writing stuff, remember to subscribe and ring a bell, hot YouTube stuff. Okay, anyway, so all of that editing stuff. So when it comes to editing stuff, it has always been the most confusing thing to me. It was like the hardest thing to learn because it's kind of a very advanced part of writing. Like I poured over every single thing about writing second drafts and honestly I never really came to an understanding simply by reading things about writing second drafts. Um, there's all sorts of tips and tricks when it comes to editing but I found that there aren't really many formulas to it that work like for everyone. The reason for this is that I think everyone kind of comes out of the first draft process with a very different kind of first draft than anyone else. Like your first draft is so unique and each project is so unique. So what you need to do is kind of completely different depending on the person. Like some people basically have, have um, written a glorified outline as a first draft and kind of need to go back and rewrite the second draft from scratch. Others like are missing a few scenes that need restructuring and like they need maybe a few revisions sometimes major sometimes less so and some really lucky people they just need a bit of polish heck those people right what makes it worse is that every new project is going to be different, like I said, and sometimes the first draft is going to be a complete mess, even if you usually write something that's amazing on the first draft. So what I'm trying to say is that while I'd love to give you a step-by-step -step guide, there isn't one. Like, none's going to exist unless I you followed like a step-by-step -step how to write a first draft and step-by-step -step how to write a second draft. And even then, you can mess that up in fun, imaginative, creative ways. So basically, yeah, there's many tools that, you, that will help you edit, but editing involves creative problem solving, like a strong grasp on writing fundamentals, and patience, and practice, and all of that. This is something I hated at the beginning of my writing journey because I wanted to like get something finished like I wanted to have a project that was done like completely but until I leveled up my skill I would continually hit walls in my editing and just not know how to pass them and I need to go back and just write new things and explore and learn. The good news that kind of comes out of all of this at the end is that the freeform nature of editing at least for me, later on, it just became my favorite part. It's very creative, there's a lot to think about, and it's not step by step, which is kind of amazing. So hopefully you get there too, if you're not there already. So yeah, alright, how do you get to that point, okay? What tools do you need for editing and revision to happen? I could go step by step, but here are the basic like tool sets you need. Okay, so first, you need to be able to look at your own work critically. And second, you need to be able to interpret feedback on your work. Finally, you need to be able to look at the issues brought up by those two other aspects and come up with solutions. So looking at your own work critically, how do you do that? First, you put it away. Don't edit any piece that is hot out of the oven. You're just going to melt all of your buttercream. Man, I did that a lot when cooking. I just impatience it gets you in all forms of life okay when you, uh, when I finish something I feel and I'm feeling reasonably confident about the thing I just finished I leave it alone even if I'm not feeling confident about it sometimes it's just a good idea to leave it alone for one it's just good to do for your mental health to take a break off of a project and like celebrate finishing it and just enjoy that instead of worrying about making it better right as soon as you're past the finish line, you know? And second, after finishing something, you're too close to the project to see its holes properly. Like, you're staring at, like, minuscule details. You think you can fix it just by by tweaking a few little things, but it could be a hot mess and you wouldn't even know. Alternatively, you could think it's a hot mess and it could totally be perfectly fine. I've had both of these happen to me, okay? Um, but yeah, you're too close when you just finish it. I feel like editing during this phase is just gonna hurt it's not gonna help okay 
the closest I would allow yourself to do after finishing a project is to go reread it and maybe write notes and don't act on those notes. Just write them up and look at them later. More often than not, when I go back on those notes, I kind of completely disagree with them. I'll usually feel the complete opposite and think that something else needs to be changed entirely, and I'm more likely to listen to the voice in my head that's had more time away to, you know, just grow and think of things differently so yes take time off before any major editing at least like do a month away like go write something else just chill out okay the next part of self-reflection comes when you reopen the pages a month later or more i'll reopen the piece Okay, I say a month, but for me, I usually go like a year, not because I planned it, I just start (laughs) thinking that the piece is horrible and irredeemable, and I don't want to touch it because I'm scared. Half the time I come back to it and I'm like, oh, this isn't bad, what was I thinking? But either way, I go through it a year or a month later, and I start writing down what I think. I mark off things I find boring and things I'm kind of confused about, things I don't feel like I got across, pacing issues, like anything I feel, I just start writing it down, marking it off. Um, I try to think of it as a reader would with fresh eyes, but you know, you can never fully get that feeling. Though sometimes when you've taken a year off of it, you completely have forgotten the story, especially if you write tons. Um, I know a lot of people catalog things here, like they write out like the scenes they have in a list to keep track of them. They write off characters and motivations and so on, and maybe that'll help for you. Personally, I've tried it, and it just becomes busy work for me. Like, I do it, and I have fun, but I don't think I get anything out of it that I don't. I tend to be more specific in my notes, like... I don't know how to describe it, but there's some things I need to, like, sort out if I feel like there's a problem. If I if I feel like I don't understand a character's motivation, I'll start brainstorming it out and writing it and, like, um, paying attention to different scenes and where that motivation could be coming from. But my notes, again, are not really helpful for you. They're very vague, and I wish I had a nice organized organizer to show you guys, but I do not. It is very freeform, very fun flowy (laughs) i go with i go with the flow i'm sorry but yeah write down all the problems and you'll kind of start to see the scope of your issues you know sometimes you'll write a few problems down but there's like a nagging larger problem that you can't put to words like sometimes when you haven't given your work time to breathe you'll think that there's only a few little problems but then you go back and you're like wow this is a major issue i I can't find specific examples where it's an issue, but I just, it feels off, you know? But either way, writing down your little problems also kind of will cue you into larger issues. And and you have to just kind of be able to look at your issues and figure out what kind of solution you'll need, which is hard. (laughs) That's where all the learning and practice will come in. You know, sometimes it's the entire plot lines and characters that will need to be rewritten or partially rewritten. And if you're new to writing and you've never really written a lot of second drafts, like, don't be afraid about getting messy and just rewriting the whole thing. It'll be an experience and you will gain experience by by doing so. You you're not losing out when you delete things, okay? Well, by delete things I usually mean put in a a, a recycle bin that you can take out later. But if you re- rewrite draft 1 from scratch and make it draft 2 and kind of ignore everything and just go with your heart where it guides you or whatever and try to fix things that way, you know, you might learn something. Anything you try isn't going to be wasted effort if you're new to something. You're just learning. And even if you're old at writing, sometimes you just need to mess around. Make a mess and learn how to fix things, okay? The critical eye is something you develop through practice, unfortunately. So you just got to keep at it. Just pay attention to your work, okay? The next important factor, like I find even more important, is learning how to look at feedback and seeking out feedback because you you can't really write in a vacuum, okay? Feedback is complicated and very necessary, assuming that you plan to write work 
that other people will read. If you're writing work just for yourself, like you don't even have to worry about editing, you know, it's for your own enjoyment. If you're having fun, do whatever. But if your plan is to show other people, you're going to want to understand how people interact with your work and how they react to it. Okay. Not only do you have to interpret their answers, you need to learn like what are the right questions to ask that kind of help you. Okay. So let me try to explain all of this the best I can. Okay. For the main part, people are kind of liars, okay? Maybe not liars, but they keep cards, like, tight to their chests, even when you're asking for feedback. And it gets really hard, because most people don't want to directly say their feelings, especially if they have something, like, negative to say. Well, some people like to only say negative things and no positive things, and they're trouble too. I'd, I'd rather the people who don't want to say anything negative. And... Even aside from the people who don't really want to share all of their feelings, a lot of people will hide their their opinions because they don't really know how to articulate their feelings, so it's easier to just not say said feelings at all. And, and yeah, if they don't constantly um, dig into other people's work and pick things apart, they're not going to be like used to doing that. So it's a good idea to kind of cultivate a critique group that you can trust and learn together on how to give feedback and how to accept feedback. But even that can be troublesome too, because and that's because you'll start to learn each other's styles and you'll start to see each other's work evolve and you'll kind of uh, neglect things that that fresh feedback would give you because you've become used to each other or you have certain things that you're blind to. Okay, so unfortunately, you're always going to be needing to seek out new perspectives and learn to parse through what is being said. So when you look at feedback, look for patterns. If more than one person is sort of um, flagging something about your work, uh, that is something for you to look at. If there's something that is constantly like, this is something you are bad at, you need to work on making it your best aspects. Like, it's good to focus on what you're great at and not change it but it but it's also good to like keep um improving and not just accept that you are bad at something just improve keep trying okay and yeah for me asking people to tell me their feelings is more helpful than asking for them to look for problems because most people will be able to describe what they felt at different points and you will have a better time trying to understand if it's a problem that they felt certain ways at different points. Like, did they feel confused when they weren't supposed to? Like, did they feel happy when they weren't supposed to? Why is this happening? You need to parse this out. Ask for them to point out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Knowing people's feelings and whether they match what you want them to feel is very valuable information. And the other thing I like to ask people is to tell my story back to me in a summary. That's because I've always had a very, I've had a, had issues with confusion among readers. So it's good for me to get them to summarize what they have just read in order for me to understand what they've gathered from it like what needs more explanation because okay let's say I have a scene where I need to get across the idea that wizards exist in the world okay this is a made-up example but it's so common in my work but like I'll be like okay this scene will show everyone that wizards are a thing and they do magic. And I'll ask people what happened in that scene, what was the takeaway, and they'll be like, oh man, there's all this metaphorical stuff, and, you know, they won't make any mention of magic, which kind of clues me into the fact that maybe the magic aspect is a little too metaphorical for them. Like, maybe it's slipping through the cracks. I don't know. It, it happens for me all the time, so I'll go back and I'll make this scene a lot more clear so that I stop getting their reaction in the fifth chapter where they're like, whoa, there's wizards in this book? And you're like, I had them in chapter one. How did you not notice them? That's on me. If everyone's like, where'd these wizards come from? That's a me problem, not a them problem. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So those are two things I always look for from people especially people who aren't writers themselves. They can always give me what their feelings are and 
what they have seen, like what their opinion, what, what, what have they gathered? Okay. And really don't, the worst thing you can do for yourself is being too scared to have other people read your work. Like it's going to happen at some point, guys. Like if your plan is to have an audience, somebody is going to read your work. So make it happen before you hit publish. Or if you are just putting out a webcomic for fun and you want to learn by doing that, you're going to receive critique through doing that. So take the critiques that you get and and use them to your advantage. For me, my writing leveled up its very fastest when I was actively seeking critique and also writing short stories for a bit. Those were two like phases where I sped up in like skill very fast but seeking critique and regular critique and joining critique circles like that really improved my writing like 10 times more than just writing the 10 million novels that I'd written at that point you know if you need a group you can look locally there's often local groups if you're too scared to leave your house like me ask around online um we have a discord there's lots of comic writers there and I'm sure they would love to read your comic script if you guys would want to, you know, make friends. Uh, not affiliated or anything, but I really like Inked Voices, which is like a website where you can form critique groups and you kind of set your own rules for them. So they're pretty good. I would set up a group personally <laughs> and just set a monthly, bi-monthly. I did a weekly critique group for a while. And those are really fun and really good. I think it's a paid thing, but it's pretty cheap. So I'd recommend that. And if not, just find friends. So there you go. Um, critiquing others is also really good practice. It'll teach you how to look critically at your own work, which is the, the number one thing we were talking about. So there you go. And like I said, once you have all of this information, it becomes a bit of a freedom as to what you do about said information. So the key is to know what your intention is. And then you look at how your intention comes across. You know, are people getting what you intended them to get out of your story? If you intend on making your audience cry and you're getting feedback like, wow, that was so funny. It's time to determine what is going amiss if maybe you want to change your intention or if you need to change how this scene comes across or change the building blocks that lead to this scene. Yeah, there isn't going to be a straightforward answer. Sometimes when you have a scene that everyone's having issues with, it's not the scene itself that it's, that's the problem, but it's the foundation it's built upon. Um, for me, that's a lot of cases where everyone is completely confused with my ending and the real problem is there was nothing building up to the ending so there's lots of things people are confused about when i get to those points i'm like what are you confused about and you start to get some answers uh again people aren't always great at articulating what they're confused about because they're confused so ask them more pointed questions you can be like do you know what wizards are and they're like there's wizards in your book and you're like okay so that's part of the problem and you're like do you know who that character is? And they're like, no, I never seen that character. And you're like, okay, they've been here the whole time. It's easy when you're getting critiques like that to be like, well, they're just, they're just a stupid reader. They don't know what's going on. But sometimes it's you, especially if it's 50 million people telling you the exact same thing, that they're confused about wizards. Maybe it's on you at that point. So I also got a question like leading up to this about knowing when to stop editing, which is a completely other side of the coin. To those of you who are very new to this, okay, so you don't want to edit forever. At some point, you need to let your work go, okay? Because no piece is ever going to be perfect because there's 7 billion people on this planet and not everyone is going to like your story. Even really beloved stories have people that dislike them, and that's perfectly valid. The thing is, you want to make sure that your intention is coming across. Um, so most people, whether they like it or not, understand your story. You want to be happy with your story, at least as happy as you can be. Uh, sometimes self-doubt makes you hate everything you write. Try and look past the self-doubt and see if you actually like the story. 
um, give it time between um, finishing it and deciding that it is completely finished again. Like sometimes when you revisit a piece, you'll find that you really like it and that you don't hate it at all. That's usually the point where I'm like, okay, this is good. Time to publish is when I come back to a story and I'm like, okay, I don't hate this. Sometimes you come back to a story and it's just not working and you don't understand why it isn't working, whether it's because you don't have the skill set to fix it or if it's just an inherently broken story, you know, you need to just keep revisiting it or give up (laughs) or you shelve it. You put it on the shelf and maybe one day you'll have the skills to fix it or the will to fix it. Sometimes by the time your skills are leveled up, you don't really have an interest in a lot of those stories that are very broken. But anyway, one of my key indicators that it's time to publish a story is that people start liking it. When I start bringing it to critique circles, it stops really getting a lot of negative feedback, even among really new people to the story. When everyone's just like, wow, I wish this was published, like that's a very, very good sign. People are like asking what the ending is is going to be, people are invested in the characters, those are all key signs that maybe it's time to let this thing free upon the world. There's never going to be a cut and dry, this is ready to go moment with stories, unfortunately. And you just got to remember that like, not every story is going to be loved by everyone. (laughs) Some stories that I don't really like personally, I've published and they've made a lot of like profound effects on people thank you for that. Thank you for liking my stories, um, even though I don't always like them. But yeah, like even stories you dislike will be liked by someone else, and getting things off your plate will give you time to enjoy more writing, learn, and improve. So don't just hoard stories like a story dragon all the time, okay? Release them into the wild. If they're bad, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, okay? You can just keep practicing and getting better. And if you really don't like it, you can just do a reboot. There you go. Before I sign off, okay, this is a long video, but I want to add this one more thing. Um, This is like completely to the side. I want to tell you guys about my personal writing process because it's like a really frowned upon um, writing process. (laughs) And I... When I heard someone describe their writing process like this, it was very validating. And I had a moment of like, oh, I am allowed to write like this. So if you write like this, or if you have ever considered writing like this, it works out really well for me. But basically, before every session of writing, I reread everything from my story out loud. Sometimes it'll be like the entire novel or a comic. Other times it'll be the last chapter that I wrote. It usually depends on how long it's been since I read the story because I tend to shelve things in the middle and then come back to them. Terrible. (laughs) Another terrible practice of mine. But anyways, as I do start rereading things, I mark things off and I start editing as I go. Like sometimes I'll go back and add scenes or I'll add paragraphs or sometimes I'll even put things in my delete folder. (laughs) Like usually the last chapter I wrote ends up getting the most editing per session. But yeah, I get a lot of comments that I have very clean first drafts and like I'm a discovery writer too, so it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And (laughs) I, I remember people in my critique critique group feeling bad when I would come with my first drafts. But yeah, they're not really first drafts, okay? Like, they're really thought out and I've gone over them a few times. But yeah, that's how I write. Like, I set things aside. Like, I do eventually do the thing where I set the entire novel aside once I finish it and I do a much larger more meticulous kind of edit. But yeah, that's my writing style. Like, use it with caution. Um, If you're interested in kind of doing something like that, you don't have to feel bad about yourself. Um, But but do take some breaks away from your story to, like, revitalize your view of it, okay? Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. If not, ignore this whole half. I think um, that style of writing comes from me doing a lot of role-playing games all the time, and I tend to retcon things on the fly, or I go back and I redo scenes just because it's fun to redo things. Anyways, I wish you all a very happy time editing. Editing is amazing and fun, and keep learning, keep doing your best. Uh, Give this video a like because I talked so long and I'm losing my voice. Um, Likes will bring it back. 
So we're ringing the bell and uh, subscribing and join the Discord so you can talk to other people about how you do the writing thing. Okay, all of that's in the description. Um, and if you want books, I got those too. Look, I have so many things on my plate. Also, I do critiques. There you go. I'm gonna do a big, big, long critique episode on um, in next month. All right. There's no live stream for the next two weeks because we have Anime North and Forest City Comic Con. So if you're in the Toronto or the London, Ontario, not London, London area, um, go stop by and say hi. All right. I'm going to go edit this. Goodbye.